So before we get started, I want to thank the Lenexa Arts Council for co-hosting uh, this workshop with us tonight. If you're unfamiliar with the Lenexa Arts Council, can everyone hear me? Can you hear me back in the back? A little louder? <laughs> okay. Um, if you're not familiar with the Lenexa Arts Council, um, you can connect with Suzanne Neely before you leave tonight to get a little bit of information on that. Um, we also want to thank the county <laughs> for providing us with the funding for this grant. Um, we would not be here tonight without them, so thank you to Johnson County. Um, this grant process was developed through three years of work by an advisory committee um, based on community feedback. So it is designed uh, around the information shared with us through surveys and community gatherings. Um, so therefore, it is made with you in mind. Our hope is that this grant is accessible and that the process is as easy as possible. Um, I do want to share that this grant is just one part of uh, a multitude of recovery efforts. Um, so this grant in its entirety includes other resources in the community that are providing ongoing training in the arts, um, as well as business literacy courses for artists. In our Urban Art House, also represented here tonight, has supplied the workbook that you are welcome to take with you. Um, and if you are unfamiliar with uh, that program or with In our Urban Art House, um, Angie and Clarissa are here tonight, so we can connect with them as well. Yeah, if you want to do <laughs> a little wave. Um, also, in our, uh, sorry, Emporia State University, who is not here tonight, um, they provide autism and trauma informed certification programs um, for educators, uh, educators, teaching artists, and art center staff throughout Johnson County. And then finally, um, the JCPRD Culture Division provides community based programs and are working to hire local artists within our community. Uh, they're also helpful in creating the new makerspace at Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center if you have not seen that. Um, finally, I would like to reiterate that we very much want you to apply for this grant. We have 82 grants of up to $7,500 um, to give out. Uh, we do not retain any of the money. We cannot use any of the money as an organization if it is not successfully um, claimed. So if you are unsure of eligibility, level of need, etc., we recommend that you apply. Um, we will go through and look over things as needed and reach out if we have additional questions or need more information. And then we have intentionally left our presentation a little bit short um, to maintain space and time for questions because I want you guys to be able to ask all the questions that you might have or that may come up throughout our presentations. Um, and just a reminder that there are no bad questions. Um, grants can be confusing to apply for. They can be confusing to read through. Um, so if you have anything, go ahead and ask them. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> Hi, no, come on in. All right, so just so you're familiar with what we're going to go over tonight, um, we're going to go over just a brief introduction of the grant and the um, process, and then I'm going to show you a timeline of um, application to uh, it being given out, I suppose. Um, and then I'm going to answer, or I'm going to go through the three topics, so eligibility and uses, applying for the grant, and then the scoring process. And after each topic, I'm going to allow some time for questions, since they're all a little, little broad and there's a lot of information to cover. Um, so if you want to just hold questions until we get to those times, and then once we're done with the presentation, we'll have just a question free for all. All right, so this is the only slide I'm going to read from word for word for you. <laughs> As we continue to face the lasting effects of COVID-19, we recognize loss of wages, event cancellations, declining sales, and other hardships that artists in our community are facing. In response, the Johnson County State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund, as a part of the American Rescue Plan Act, has awarded the Arts Council of Johnson County um, emergency recovery funds to provide financial assistance to artists and art nonprofit organizations still recovering from COVID in the fiscal year of 2021. Through this grant, again, we have 82 artists that will receive direct grants of up to $7,500. All right, so the application is now open and open July 17th. So you have from now until August 18th to get your application in. Closes at 11.59 p.m. We have all day. Um, we have our first uh, workshop tonight. We'll talk about it more, but there's a second workshop um, that will also be held virtually. It is going to be co-hosted with Inner Urban Art House, and that is it is August 3rd, that's next Thursday, and it is 6 to 7 at Inner Urban Art House. Um, you, we will have a reser or RSVP like we did for this, um, but it's not required. You can come if you want to. Um, we will also be sending this information out to you, um, so that's good to know. After the application closes, 
there's about a two week um, window for uh, reviewing the applications. And then from September 5th to 19th, um, sorry, first two weeks is going to be reviewed for completion and then it's going to be reviewed for the scoring system. And then September 29th, the panelists will score, finalize, and grant awards. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. It's not, you're not gonna be waiting for months on end, which is nice. All right, eligibility. And there are a lot of frequently asked questions here, so let's, we'll go through them all together. Um, first is that you're 21 plus. This is because we want you to have an established art practice mainly. Um, you must identify as a practicing artist able to demonstrate a sustained commitment of at least five years um, to artistic career, to making work, and generating dialogue with the public audience. Um, you must be able to provide a W-9 social security number or individual taxpayer identity number. Uh, able to prove a loss of at least 15% when comparing 2019 gross revenue just for your creative practice, not for your day job or anything else, um, compared to 2021 gross revenue for your creative art practice. And then finally, um, you have to show proof that you either work or reside in Johnson County. So residing um, obviously would be a mortgage, a rent lease, etc. And then working would be having a studio, having a storefront, something along those lines. All right, I'm just gonna briefly go over some commonly asked questions about eligibility. Um, so my business was profitable in 2019, but not profitable in 2021. Um, am I eligible to apply? Yes, the business needs to have shown, really just needs to have been a thing in 2019. Can I approve loss of income for 2022 instead of 2021? No, and the reason for this is this grant is funded by the American um, Rescue Plan Act, so it is specific to COVID-19 relief, and that for this purpose has been identified as 2021 that year. Am I a recipient of grants? Oh, I am a recipient of grants administered in 2020. Am I eligible? Yes, uh, it is fine if you have received other emergency funding, um, you are still welcome to apply. My business saw a revenue increase in 2021, Am I eligible for this grant? So this is kind of a two-part um, answer. We want to see the 15% loss from 2019 to 2021, but if you um, received recovery funds in 2021 that caused your, your um, taxes to look inflated or your income to look inflated, uh, we will take that into consideration and there will be a space in the grant where you can write a um, little note to us describing that. And then are nonprofits eligible for this grant? Yes, but it's a separate application. It is not the application for the artists. And that will open on September 5th. So after this one closes, we will open the next one up. Are there any questions about eligibility? Uh, if I work in Johnson County, but I don't live here, mm -hmm. and I do other works in different states, mm -hmm. different counties, Yes. Uh, should I, I mean, if I show my income, uh, goes down but not in Johnson County so if you have in other place <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, do you have a like a lease in Johnson County or anything no, I, I work front? for a music school that is in okay. the next time Overland Park then that but that's would not my only income and actually it didn't change much during during COVID because we just went online oh gotcha but so other it's it's literally maybe thirty percent of my income or forty percent of my income. So for the proof of income, it is exclusive to your creative business. So if that's being a teaching artist, well, everything else is also uh, arts. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm just it's not in Johnson County. I understand. Not all of it. <laughs> that's what if I mean. you were to apply as a teaching artist that works in Johnson County, that would be eligible. Okay. Is that <laughs> if there's a yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying that my income as a teaching artist of mm -hmm. Johnson County did not change much in between. So you don't have to separate your different oh, art practices. That's what I, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to separate your different art practices. It can be the overall okay. gross income of your creative mm -hmm. practice and everything that involved is involved in that. Okay. If that makes sense. Thank you. Uh huh. Any other questions? Yes. So does that mean that you have to have worked in Kansas, Kansas residents only? It is worked or lived. So if you live in Johnson County or you work in Johnson County. 
And that's because is this it's for artists or is it for businesses? So this specific workshop is for artists, but the grant also applies to small business or nonprofits. Um, the application just isn't open yet for nonprofits. Does that make sense? Maybe differentiate between a sole proprietor versus a business might help you yes. clarify that? Yes, if you are the sole proprietor of your creative practice, and that could be a, a number of different things, then you would apply for the artist grant, which is this one. It's for non-employer creative small businesses, so as long as you do not have employees of mm -hmm. your small business, you are welcome to apply. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Do you have a question? I can wait, though, at the end if you'd like me to. No, 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 go ahead. If, um, <clears throat> in that period, um, I live in Johnson County, mm -hmm. um, but I sometimes freelance, and I was freelancing for Washburn in mm -hmm. Topeka. The production was shut down. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like in that period, I didn't get what I wanted, but I'll have to check the dates. The thing is, they did eventually bring back the production, but you okay. know what I mean? I yes. don't know if that's... Yeah, so the loss of was there at first. I mean, eventually. Yeah, and it's just um, from 2019 to 2021. Okay, so that's say where to check dates. Yeah, so you don't have to okay. look at 2020. You don't have to look at 2022. Just 2019 yeah, and yeah. 2021. It's kind of unique in that way. It's what I was hoping for then, mm -hmm. and then life happened, and then too. Okay. And it's recovery for COVID, yeah, which was yes. not restricted to a single year. We are just looking at your finances for sure. a single year, if that makes okay. sense. So if, if you had a loss of work in 2020, we're not going to be like, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> it still counts. We're just asking you to approve finances for 2021. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. And I, I would reiterate, when in doubt, go ahead and apply and complete the application. Um, we will look at everything. We will in, we will review each application individually, and there are several opportunities for you to describe to us not only your creative practice but the impact that the pandemic had on your small business as an artist. That all is going to be in consideration. Again, like Katie said, we don't want to keep the money. We have no reason to keep mm -hmm. the money. We want to get it out to you. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your income loss and you go, oh. Well, rats, I'm like at 14.9% or I'm at 10%. Go ahead and submit an application because odds are we're going to be able to look at your story and make a case to fund you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions about eligibility? Some of this will start to make more sense as we continue on as well. Yes. <clears throat> what if you were launching uh, a business mm -hmm. and then COVID happened? As you were launching your business. Yes. And then it took two years to be able to launch that business, mm -hmm. you could show how much, like, okay, this year I made 10,000, Yeah. The next year I made 15,000, and as I scale it, it will, I'm a teacher, okay. so my, this is my second business. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was kind of a, a Yeah, <laughs> that's one of those things, I would definitely recommend you apply, um, and that will be reviewed case by case basis, kind of, but, um, if you had started a business or you had a project that you were working on in 2019 that you had to put on hold for two years because of the pandemic, that is considered a loss of income or a loss of, of work, etc. So I would go ahead and apply in that situation. I had other significant losses too, mm -hmm. as a Yeah. <coughs> Def yes, definitely. I would definitely apply. Okay. Any other last questions before we move on? And not to say we can't continue to talk about eligibility if we move on. <laughs> it's just, okay. All right, so when you apply, you do not have to give us any supporting documents during the application process. We will review applications, and then at that point, if you are selected, we will then ask you to provide documentation. Um, so documentations that we might ask for at that time are including but not limited to tax statements, financial statements, 1099, Schedule C, W-2, W-4, things like that. Um, they might be handy to have while you fill out the application, but you're not going to need to like digitally upload them or anything like that. All right, so uses for this grant, so it is, for the sake of recovery, directly impacted by COVID-19. Um, so you can use it for your business operations, purchase of equipment, rent or mortgage, payroll, or other business-related activities 
that provide recovery relief? That's a lot of questions <laughs> wrapped up all in there. So I will open the floor. Do you have a question? Oh, yeah, quick. Um, uh -huh. Payroll. Yes. Am I, I'm a self proprietor. Mm -hmm. I keep myself on payroll. Does that count? Yes, if you have loss of funds from 2019 to 2020, you can absolutely reimburse yourself for that. Okay. Through the, through the grant. Other questions on uses? Yes. Will there be any follow-up um, reporting required after yes. the completion of the grant and spending of the funds? That is a good question. We are going to ask that um, grant recipients um, send us either a video or a short, you know, blurb about how they spent the funds. And it's mostly for testimonial sake. We're not going to knock on your door and ask you to show us the kiln that you bought <laughs> or anything like that. And we just want to know, you know, how you were impacted by the grant, essentially. All right. Any other questions? All right, we're going to move on to the application. I'm going to walk you through the application. If you have a phone or computer or whatever, um, there are QR codes on your desks. You can scan that to go through the application with me. Get there in just a moment. So the grant is accessible in a few different ways. Um, it's on you know, our Instagram bio, LinkedIn. Uh, so you can grab it on there. You can go to our website, artsjoco.org. Uh, I'll walk you through this too in a second, but you can hover over programs and events, then select art and community recovery and rebuilding program. We're going to scroll down just a little bit and it's right there. It says artist application, real big, um, so you can't miss it. Let me see if this will work. so we can all see it. Excuse me, is it under programs and events or is it under advocacy and resources? Um, so go to hover over program and events and then you're, it'll be like the third option down, I think. It's arts and community recovery okay. and rebuilding. Um, I'll just show you right here because here we are. All right, so we really wanted um, the application to be as easy as possible, painless as possible. I'm sure a lot of you know applying for grants can be really tedious and tiring and all that. So <laughs> we want you to have a good experience with this grant. Um, I'm we sorry, do. Can we have a Wi Fi? Or oh, I'm sorry. You can connect to um, it's Lenexa City Guest. Well, next to guests. Oh, okay. Thank you. And it might make you accept the terms and conditions, but. Mm -hmm. All right, so in the beginning, it's going to kind of reiterate some of the things. Oh, I'm not even showing you. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. All right, in the beginning, it's going to reiterate some of the things we've talked about eligibility, uses, etc. You're going to um, first answer five questions. They're yes or no questions, they're very easy. They're just to help you determine your eligibility. But again, if you are on the fence, you're not sure of your eligibility, your level of need, et cetera, we recommend that you apply. You're also welcome to reach out if you're unsure. We will help you problem solve that. Um, they're pretty basic questions, all pertaining to the eligibility. And then here's where you're going to give a estimate of your um, loss, well, I guess, not loss. You're going to give the number for your creative practice gross revenue from 2019 and then 2021. Uh, we've been doing the math for applicants to get that 15% number, um, so we will double check, but we're gonna put that in there. And then here's the disclaimer, did you receive relief funding, yes or no? And then you can explain, so if um, you did receive a grant, for COVID relief in 2021 and it inflated your income, you can go ahead and describe that to us here and we will take that into consideration as we review the grants. Excuse me, mm -hmm. so that applies to PPP loans? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. 
All right, so the next is uh, info about you, um, some demographics, your address, like for figuring out if you're in Johnson County or not, um, or studio, so you have the option to put in either one. And then it is going to ask you which district you're in. You can use this link here to determine what district you're in. I have no idea what district I live in, so I would definitely rely on, on this tool. Um, and then it goes into some demographics down below. Demographics. Here you're going to give us a little bit more information about your art practice. So, um, you know, what, what your practice is and then also some things you have done through your practice. So, sat on a review panel, taught in my discipline, etc. And then you're going to describe um, more experience you have, artist bio. When I send out this presentation, which I will email the presentation to everyone so you have a copy, um, you'll see there is a link that you can go to, to about how to write an artist bio and there's an example if you don't have one or are unfamiliar with the process. And then we want to see examples of your work. Um, that can be social media, a website, a portfolio, etc. You don't need to send us your entire portfolio, just some photos. Same if you're doing um, sound clips or video. You don't need to see all of your video. I think it's limited to three minutes, I think. Two minutes, three minutes, something like that. And then finally, um, you're going to, oh, I guess you are going to um, go ahead and say what you plan to use it for. Again, we're not gonna knock on your door and ask you to, to prove that for us. Anything else you'd like to share about your loss of income? Um, and this is really important because this is two thirds of the scoring is based off the testimony you provide on loss of income due to COVID or just the impact COVID had on you. So do go ahead and, you know, if you're gonna spend time on anything during this grant, I would spend time kind of working that um, to your advantage and explaining to us in detail how you were affected by COVID because that's a large part of the, of the grant. And then these are pretty straightforward. We're just going to ask if you want to hear from us some more. And that is pretty much that. At the bottom, and I'll talk about this more, it does explain the scoring system, so you're welcome to read that. Um, I'll share more about it throughout the presentation. But that's pretty much the grant. It's pretty straightforward. Does anyone have questions on the application, things you might need as you apply, et cetera? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are these funds coming? They're coming from the uh, Johnson County State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund. So that is a part of the um, America Recovery. The American Rescue Plan after yes. 2021. <laughs> yes, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Could you drill down to how to get to this form again? Yes, yes. Sorry, you did not get to I see. That's the last step. <laughs> it's okay. So you go to our website, just artsjoco.org programs and events hover over that and then it's like the third down arts and community recovery and rebuilding program click on that and then you're going to scroll for a little bit it's going to describe the entire grant it's not all pertinent to this application but go ahead and scroll down and you'll see johnson county covid recovery grants and the first one is the artist grant so you'll just click on that and if you have trouble finding it you're welcome to call or email us we will send you a link. Any other questions? All right. That worked. Sweet. All right, again, just tips. We went over some of these, but um, if you answer no to any of the five questions, that does technically mean you're not eligible. However, if you are unsure, if we want you to apply, if you have questions, ask us, email us, call us, because we really want you to apply and we want you to have access to this funding. Um, so don't be turned away by a no if you check that box. Um, we will need dollar amounts for 2019 and 2020. It's helpful to have your paperwork ready, your tax files, whatever, so you can write those numbers down. Again, we're not going to ask for them on the application. We will ask for them after the fact as supplemental information. Um, you will need to, need to identify your district. Again, there's a link, so don't, don't worry about that. Um, when written, we recognize the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on LGBTQ, Black, Indigenous, other people of color, veterans, and female artists. 
Because of this, demographics are being taken into consideration during the review process via a scaled rating system. We ask that you provide as much information as you're comfortable with when filling out the demographics. Just so we want to help you. It's additive, those points are. So you're not going to get points taken away if you don't fall into one of those categories, but they're additive points to your score. Um, so answer truthfully, or however you feel comfortable. Um, you won't be rated lower based on the experiences you select. So when you go through and you say, I've sat on a panel, I have taught in my industry, et cetera, that's just information we're curious to know. Um, that's not going to affect the scale system in any way. Um, and then right here you'll see there's the link to the how-to for the bio. You're welcome to utilize that when you um, get a version of this. Any questions about application? Yes. Well, um, would it be helpful for me to, if I have my taxes from 2021, mm -hmm. would it be helpful to uh, deduct the 1099s from various, all these other odd jobs that I had? Yes, we uh, just want to know the income for your creative practice. So I don't, I don't need like, to know your day job income, anything on side hustles, if you were barista on the side. We don't need to know that. We just want to know for your art practice. So yes, I would definitely subtract. I know that can be a little tedious. But <laughs> Hopefully that's the hardest part of the grant application process for you. Any other questions? Uh, if uh, I file jointly with my husband, do you, that. if you have um, documentation? He's also an artist, but he didn't have that much of yeah. income. Yeah, you would have to, if you wanted to apply, he could also apply, but you'd have to apply separately. So if you have documentation of income in another form, um, that could be receipts, well, I have contracts. For instance. Yeah, then that, then you could just so rely I don't on need that. To provide a tax, uh, you don't, we don't have, it doesn't have to be a tax document. Okay. That's okay. just. It can be kind of whatever, however you track your income. Okay, thanks. Yes? Did you say you have 82 grants above just 7,200? Mm -hmm. How many people typically apply? Um, so this year we actually expanded the program. We did this in 2020 and we only, the number's on here, 52? In 2020, with the CARES Act funding, we had 54 applicants and we funded 44 artists. So we're essentially doubling what we did in 2020, or hoping to double what mm -hmm. we did in 2020. Applications? And successful, successful applicants. Can you say yeah. that again, please? How many, the numbers again, you had how many applicants? In 2020, we had 54 applicants and we funded 44. And this year, with the CARES, or the um, American Rescue Plan funding, we hope to fund 82, which is essentially ish doubling what we did in 2020 and increasing the grant size because we have more funding to give out. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this. Thank Thank you. Any other questions? All right. So that was a good segue. Um, so we did fund 44 of 54. And we just want to reiterate that a lot of these, the applicants that were not successful were because the application was incomplete, um, they could not prove that they worked or lived in Johnson County, so it wasn't that their practice wasn't valid or anything like that, um, it was mostly because of incomplete applications. So when you are going through the application, um, make sure everything is complete. I don't think it will let you submit it if it's not, but um, you know, we also want more than like a single sentence for explanation of hardship by COVID. Um, so making that robust is really going to help you. It's going to work in your favor. Um, so make sure you do that. Uh, we want, again, everyone to receive funding. All right. So in terms of scoring, two thirds of the points for your application come from your explanation of financial hardship, how it affected your artistic practice and how the grant would assist you in rebuilding. And then one third, and again, these are additive points, not negative points, one third will come from diversity and equity answers. Are there any questions about that? Yes. Um, does a diversity and equity, you had that shot before, mm -hmm. but does it, um, that are probably in the questions, if the audiences we reached mm -hmm. that through a festival or through a presentation were school children, were senior mm -hmm. citizens, were part of person, is that considered under there? This or? is just for you personally the as the artist. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Any other questions on that? 
And again, this is reviewed by a fairly large team of, of panelists, so. Are the panelists the artists? There is kind of a mixture. I don't think we've identified fully yet our panel for this um, grant, but we try to include artists um, on that panel when possible. Hopefully we have more than one. We have a few. Any other questions? One more thing. Yeah. And how, how are you getting the information out to those that had lived in the county mm -hmm. or worked in the county in 21, but now 23, they're right, not? Elsewhere. So How are we reaching those people? That's a good question. One of the things we did for um, this particular grant was created marketing partnerships. So that's with other organizations um, that work in Johnson County, but might, might also work elsewhere. So like Artist Mentorship works in Johnson County, but also in North Kansas City and like, you know, downtown. So through that, we were able to reach their audiences as well. So we um, contracted with both organizations and individual artists um, that had, you know, fairly good followings. And we asked them to share it with, with their crowd. So we're hoping that that reaches a broader um, community than just Johnson County um, and then of course traditional anyone that follows us on social media or our emailing list will also hear about it and we're hoping that applicants share with their you know peers as well so does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Well and can I ask a question for clarity? Mm -hmm. Will re the awards be for people who are currently working or living in Johnson County? Or does yes, it retro to 2021? I didn't think about that. How's the financial? Right. Yeah. Do they currently need to have that occupancy in either business practice or home address? I think we can clarify that with Johnson County Finance. Okay. I suspect that they're going to say you need to either live or work in the county currently. No, when you say work in the county, does that mean you take jobs? Are you like have a regular, like a teaching job, or, or it's just that because if you work in the county from time to time through the year, does that count too? So your practice would need to be based in Johnson County, so that could be proved through like a lease, a storefront. One thing we're also clarifying is if you were contracted by a school or something like that, if that also counts, um, because that is your business address for all you know purposes um, but yes does that answer your question any other questions that's the end of my presentation we intentionally left room for more questions um, so I'm going to open up the floor if there are questions about anything we covered yes when, when is this application happening? What's the deadline for this application? The uh, application is open, so you can apply now, and then you have until August 18th at 11.59 p.m. to submit the application. And you submit it online? Like when you yes. pull it out, yep. it goes right online? Yep. And then someone will contact you? So. Yes. Yeah, we will contact you if you have follow-up questions about your application, and then also if you're a successful recipient, we will we will reach out. Any other questions? Is there a um, confirmation email that everyone will receive yes. once they've successfully submitted? Yes, there is. Yes, that's a good question. Any other questions? Yes. Where is the office located? For the Arts Council? Mm -hmm. We are inside of the Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center building. So we're kind of tucked away back in the offices in there. Yeah. Yeah, any other questions? I will let you know, we will send this out. We are also recording, so it will be on YouTube and our socials so if you want to review. And we do have a second workshop on August 3rd at Inner Urban Art House, and it's 6 to 7, 7.30, depending. Um, there will also be tech assistance available to you at Inner Urban Art House the two weeks leading up to the close date. So that's August 7th, I think, is that Monday? And it's... Month. Sorry, I'm throwing a lot Thank of information you. really fast. <laughs> um, and I believe um, you can email info at Inner Urban Art House to set up an appointment. Appointments are recommended just so that we know that there are hands on deck ready to help you. We don't have five people coming in for help at one time. Um, but that's a great resource for you to use. You're, of course, welcome to call or email uh, myself, 
Sarah or just the, you can just call our office um, and we can help you problem solve any, any issues you may have. Um, so mm -hmm. that second workshop is going to be pretty much the same thing? It's going to be very similar. Yeah, we might have different questions, but the presentation will be the yeah. same and mm -hmm. info should be the same. <laughs> okay. Probably won't learn anything new between now and then. Um, and we will also follow up on the live work with the county. Um, and we can send that out in our email as well, the answer to that question. Um, are there any other questions before we wrap up? Katie, do you yeah. want to share our contact information? Yes, my email is on um, the website. I will also send out our phone did, number. Did you send the email's information? Yes, yeah, I, so I sent the email um, reminding you of the workshop yeah. tonight. Yeah. Um, so if you have that, you have my mm -hmm. contact info. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not on here. Oh, I'll add it before I send mm -hmm. it out to you. Uh, our emails are really easy. It's katie at archjoco or archjoco at archjoco. Oh, nice. <laughs> so make it easy for you. Um, I'll add our phone number on here too, I think. But it's also on my email and in the little closing blurb. Um, you can find us on any social media as archjoco as well. You're welcome to DM us. I will read them and respond. <laughs> um, yeah. Can I do a shameless plug? Yeah, please do. Hi everyone. Um, uh, Chris and I are with Inner Urban Art House. So if you do need technical support with, you know, getting your documents scanned for future uploading, or just want to make sure that you have everything in place before you hit the submit, submit button, we're happy to help. Um, each of you got a workbook, and if you didn't throw over on the table, part of the grant that we received was to be able to offer professional development courses at no cost. Um, so on the front of the book, there is a web address or there's a QR to scan with a promotional code and we're offering scholarships ongoing for all of our professional development classes. So just register whether you're qualified for the grant or, or for the, we call them slur, the slur funds or not. <laughs> um, please sign up for that because we'd love to have you come be part of those classes and be part of that really dynamic arts community that we have in the, the region. Um, it's great, phenomenal. We've served 320 individuals in Kansas City in the last two years through this program. So it's a really vibrant, wonderful, um, creative art sector. And we love to be part of it. <laughs> and definitely take a workbook if you haven't grabbed one, because they're a great resource even if you can't or don't take the class. Um, additionally, when this grant opens up for the nonprofits, um, we will do this again, but it will be catered towards the nonprofits. Um, so if you do work for a nonprofit or own a nonprofit, um, we definitely invite you back for those. Dates TBD, but we will communicate those with you as they start popping up. Um, if there are no other questions. We've got two questions. Here we go. Mm -hmm. When was it nonprofit? It opens um, September 5th. We don't have the workshops planned just yet, um, but we'll keep <coughs> you informed and updated as those become available. Do you have a question? On the points that you're reading mm -hmm. for diversity, do they also have a segment for age? Mm. If you're over 50, if you're over 65. Do we? I don't know. Let me look, because I <laughs> think we did that last time. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't think we do, but we do ask for your age range. It does not ask for age. It does ask for an age range. Um, and then you can tell us if you identify as LGBT, LGBTQIA+ as black, indigenous, or a person of color, um, as a single parent or guardian with children, as a female artist, if you identify as someone with a disability, if you're an active military or veteran artist, if English is your second language, or if you are at or below the income threshold of Johnson County. So we give you lots of opportunities to tell you, tell us about you. <laughs>